Right, <coughs> hello again ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the the channel. Um, first of all I apologise for the light or lack thereof today. Um, I hope you can see me, perhaps it might be better if you don't see me too well, but um, yeah, um, it's a bit glum outside <coughs> so I'm not quite sure how we're going to look. Um, okay, today uh, we're going to take a look at some books that I've read in the last oh, a few weeks. Um, unfortunately I don't get through as many science fiction books these days as I would like because um, I am a slow reader and B I, I, I seem to spend time on, on other things that limits uh, the time I have to read. But um, I've got three books today to have a look at. Um, two I'm going to I'm going to whiz through rather quickly because I want to talk more about the, the third one. Um, and the first is The Green Brain by Frank Herbert. Right, the, um, the premise of this book is that um, it's set in Brazil. Um, and there's a character called uh, João Martinho. Apologies if my Spanish, Portuguese, whatever is not so good. Um, but um, this guy is um, tasked with eradicating the insects um, to um, improve production. Now, I don't know the ins and outs of that. Uh, I don't know anything about ecology. Uh, but uh, basically, there's, um, there's a green zone and a red zone. Now, the green zone is where all the insects have been cleared out. The red zone is where they need to go in uh, and clear them out. Um, it's all been going well and then it goes pear-shaped and we have this group from an organisation called the International Ecology Organisation as I remember, um, head by a Chinese guy called Lu, I think it is. Uh, he has a hidden agenda and something to do with the Chinese being secretive about their plans uh, for the insects. And he, he and his cohorts come in and um, try to remedy the situation or get it sorted. Um, now, the, the um, I suppose the thing about this book is that there's a disparate um, cast of characters and you're never quite sure um, who's at what, um, who's doing what to whom and where. Um, and you have a situation where um, you have a, um, this brain is a, is a giant insect, intelligent insect, and he has his drones, and they're trying to disrupt everything that the humans are doing to get rid of them. Um, he can, for instance, um, these drones can form into the uh, metamorphose into the form of a human being. Um, which looks like a human from a distance, not so good close up. And I, I don't know what the point of that plot point was, quite frankly. But um, that, that's that's what is happening. And, and the last mm, last third of the book is just um, a chase, really, where um, characters of Martino and his um, cohorts and uh, the members of the International Ecology Organisation band together to do something or other and... Um, they have to escape, and it's like um, from the killer insects, and it's like um, I don't know, it's, <laughs> it's like um, a, a runaway train movie, if you like. Um, it's weird, uh, and that's you know that's about the strength of it, really. Uh, my impressions now. Um, Frank Herbert's a revered name in my mind because nearly 60 years ago now I read you and it blew me away as a, as a late teenager and I've, I've always, I mean June is still in my top three favourite science fiction novels uh, so I was particularly disappointed with this. It doesn't seem to hang together as, as a there's a cogent uh, sort of um, uh, prose and I don't know, there was just something about it that, that bored me to be quite honest. Um, it certainly didn't uh, 
didn't enthrall me in any way, even though you got this chase sequence at the end. <clears throat> and um, I, quite uh, frankly, I, I could have done without it. Uh, so on a on a one the scale of one to ten, with five being average, I just give it a three. Not so good. Okay, doke. Now we move on to <coughs> excuse me. Now we move on to Einstein's Monsters by Martin Amos. There, um, I bought this on a whim, really. I don't know why, but it was on eBay, cheap, and I thought, ah, sounds vaguely interesting. Um, basically, it's um, it's a book about um, nuclear armament and um, nuclear deterrent and the aftermath of. Um, it comprises uh, an impassioned essay uh, at the start, which uh, rails against, as I say, nuclear armament and deterrent and what have you. And it was a rebuff to his, his father, uh, the more well-known Kingsley Amos, um, who had opposing views. Uh, he believed that the deterrent was necessary. So you have this essay, which, you know, which is probably, probably the most interesting part. And um, then you have five short stories um, on the subject. I, I'm not going to go through each story because it will be here all night. But basically the first two stories have a very tenuous, nebulous connection uh, with nuclear aftermath. Um, and then the last three stories are plain science fiction. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's, very, it's very well written. Um, and the, the last story I, I found very amusing. It made me laugh out loud. Um, but uh, as, as an overall package... Um, I would say it's, although it's science fiction, it's kind of not, <laughs> it's hard to explain. Um, being written by a mainstream author, you know, obviously his sensibility is different to an Arthur Clarke or a, an Isaac Asimov, uh, who doesn't have that grounding, you know, in, in science. So um, I found it to be vaguely interesting from that viewpoint. And, and as I say, I found the last story rather funny. Uh, which I don't think that was the intention, but uh, I, I I laughed. Um, there's not not really much else I can say about it. You know, it, it is what it is. Um, and on a scale of one to ten, with five being average, I would give it a seven. Right now to the book that I really want to talk about. Um, after the untimely passing of one of our greatest science fiction authors in the UK, uh, Christopher Priest, I decided to, in my way, honour his memory uh, by reading one of his books. Now, I don't have too many of his books. I read Fugue for a Darkened, Darkened, is it Darkening Island or Darkened Island um, many moons ago. And uh, I had a choice of two, and the one I decided on was Inverted World. Um, it's... Fairly easy book to find because of the it's, it's a masterworks, you know, and these are all over the place. Um, but the main the, the setup here is um, rather complicated. It's this the, the city here um, is, is is a wooden mainly constructed of wood, and there's I don't know th thousands of people inside, as I remember, um, and they're unaware of what's going on the outside. What's going on on the outside? is that the city is being winched on these tracks very slowly. And then the idea is once it's been winched forward, they get the tracks from behind, dig them up, stick them in front, and, you know, it moves that way. Um, they, they're trying to get towards something called the optimum, which is um, the farthest away they can get for safety. And the reason that they need safety is <clears throat> the ground is actually moving south, the ground itself. And they're fearful of um, what they might find where if they, if they ever reach a point where it's dangerous. Now, uh, in amongst this, we have um, a young personal man or young man called Hellwood Mann. Uh, uh, he's, he, he's tasked with being an apprentice for the, the guilds, the many guilds that exist inside. 
And as I said, the people inside, outside of the guild, Riglan, what's going on outside. And he is his first guild. I think it's a tracker's guild. I might, I might be wrong with that. But anyway, he, he's, he's responsible for being a part of this team that digs the track up and relays it. Uh, they get to help from um, from people from local villages who they hire. Or, well, they they barter stuff, I think. The barter guild um, barter sort of like machinery and um, food and um, stuff like that. And uh, they get the job done that way. Now, um, Hellwood has to work with or be a part of all the guilds within. And at some point he... He has to take uh, three women back to their village or, or town, which is Southwood, where nobody wants to go. Um, now, part of the barter agreement with the to get the workers from the um, from the village, towns or villages, whatever, um, is that these women go back. So. Hellwood has to take three of them back and during his journey back he notices that they, they change physically they become smaller squat to the point where he can't understand them he can't understand what they're saying and he gets to a point eventually where he has to hang on to stop him being dragged into the whatever's there he doesn't know what's there but it's dragging him in so he has to leave the women and make his way back. Now, Hellwood has had an arranged marriage um, earlier in, in the book. Um, and not, not a sort of a happy marriage, really. And there's a time dilation effect that for every sort of few days that Hellwood is, is going south. Uh, it turns out that two years have passed um, on the, on the city, in the city. And um, when he gets back, his wife's sort of remarried or shacked up with somebody else. Anyway, um, Hellwood becomes um, a part of the, the, the Barter Guild. And during that, he meets, um, he meets a, a woman um, who is a, is a doctor. And she does some research. She finds it odd that uh, this city just keeps moving and moving. And she does some research and her findings change the lives of the city dwellers forever. That's as far as I'll go. Um, obviously, I, there, there's a lot more intricate parts of the plot, but um, I'll, I'll leave it there. Um, Without, I don't want to give any spoilers away to people who might want to read it. Um, now, I really enjoyed this book. It's probably, along with Tower Zero by Paul Anderson, um, it's the best read I've had for many a year. Uh, I, it's, it's what I call pure science fiction uh, in, in, in as much as um, it deals with with unknown um, things, um, and it, it 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 it's a mystery, in effect, why these people from from Earth um, are travelling this way. Um, it, it's it's quite a remarkable book, in my opinion, and um, I would I would recommend that you read it. As I say, it's easy got. Um, you look anywhere that does these masterworks, HMV do them for a pittance. Um, and on a scale of 1 to 10, with 5 being average, I'll give it an 11. Brilliant. So that's um, that's my three books that I've read. Um, next up, I will be doing um, a short video on graphic novels that I've picked up cheaply. And until then, thank you very much for subscribing, viewing, commenting, and I will see you very, very soon. Bye-bye now.